Good happy Thursday afternoon, October 14, 2021. I'm Riley King and welcome to this afternoon edition of the Riley King Newscast right here on the Riley King Network. I'm Riley King and we have a lot of news to get to this afternoon, so let's get started right now. First step, tuberculosis case confirmed in Concord School District. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. Now's the time to get a great deal on taking care of your property. You need the number one rated reliability of Kubota. Health experts are telling us that tuberculosis mainly affects the lungs. Now, according to the Mayo Clinic, the symptoms include uh, coughing for three weeks or more, pain when breathing, loss of appetite, fatigue, fever, night sweats, and chills. The World Health Organization says the disease spreads through the air, and you only need to inhale a few of the germs to become infected. Now, Concord school officials have already started the process of contact tracing. Once we've identified those close contacts, that information will be shared with public health and they will be making the contacts out to those that we have been able to identify. Now, students, parents, and faculty all encouraged to attend a virtual meeting at 6 this evening to discuss any concerns surrounding this tuberculosis case. The superintendent telling us that email invites will be sent out this morning. Reporting live in Concord, Ray Brewer, WMUR News Now. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Rochester police search for driver in hit and run that left a jogger seriously injured. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. Now's the time to get a great deal on taking care of your property. You need the number one rated reliability of Kubota compact tractors so you can do it all and do it right. Z-series mowers that deliver a quality cut and Sidekick Utility Vehicles, where durability meets speed. Right now, bring home select Kubota equipment for zero down, 0% zero APR for up to 84 months, and save up to $1,400. Chapel Tractor, where you'll notice the difference since 1955. Well, this morning, police in Rochester are still searching for the driver who hit a father of three while he was out for a jog. 36-year-old Matt Lefebvre was on North Main Street Monday morning when he was hit by a dark blue or black SUV. Witnesses say the vehicle stopped briefly and then took off. Police say Lefebvre was wearing a headlamp with strobes at the time. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Executive Council Republicans deal with Sununu as a political setback. Governor says he pushed as hard as I could for federal vaccine funds, but the Council Republicans unmoved. Try as he might. Governor Sununu can't distance himself far enough to escape political sharpness from Wednesday's vote of the four Republican members of the Executive Council rejecting federal vaccine funds. Not in the current political environment, certainly. Here's a look at the rest of the article. Take a look. And if you want to read this article again, we will share it with you on the Riley King Network Facebook page right after this broadcast. TSA says 40% of employees are unvaccinated as deadline looms. 
The Transportation Security Administration says four in ten members of its workforce, including screeners, remain unvaccinated against COVID-19 as its deadline looms. The deadline for civilian federal government workers to be fully vaccinated is November 22nd, the Monday before Thanksgiving, one of the busiest travel times of the year. We have about 60% of our workforce has been vaccinated. That number needs to go quite a bit higher over the next few weeks, TSA Administrator told CNN an exclusive interview. The November 22nd deadline is being fully vaccinated. It's still six weeks away, but the deadline for receiving the vaccine are rapidly approaching, or in the case of the Moderna vaccine, have already passed. Since an individual has to receive the full schedule of doses and wait two weeks before being considered fully vaccinated. In order to meet that deadline, the last possible date for receiving the first dose of the Pfizer vaccine is October 18th, while the latest possible date for the first dose of Moderna was October 11th. The Pfizer vaccine requires a three-week waiting period in between the first and second dose. Moderna requires a four-week wait. The last possible date to receive a single dose Johnson & Johnson vaccine is November 8th, two weeks before the November 22nd deadline. Also, he said he is very hopeful that the agency's employees can meet the deadline and that there will not be a work shortages. We are building contingency plans for if we do have some staffing shortages as a result of this. But I hope to avoid that, he said. He also said he has been holding employee town hall meetings to make the case to the agency's workforce. Coas County cases climb, straining resources for health care providers. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. Now's the time to get a great deal on taking care of your property. You need the number one rated reliability. The city of Berlin and other surrounding Coas County communities have fared well during the pandemic, but now it's experiencing its strongest surge in cases. Our cases, both in Berlin and in terms of the county, are the highest that we've seen since the pandemic began. Androscoggin Valley Hospital in Berlin is feeling the strain. Staff is limited, some sick themselves, and they're tired. We're also seeing um, a heavy volume in terms of our ICU patients and Honestly, patients that, um, you know, are struggling to uh, make any progress against this. ABH is now transferring patients to other hospitals to make room for those seeking treatment for the virus. But even that is now difficult. We have a lot of facilities in the state that are seeing similar problems. We're having uh, difficulty in terms of transfer needs to other facilities for care. There's not a lot of room left at the hospital. But yet the the cases of COVID continue to rise. Berlin Fire Chief Jay Watkins also serves on the Emergency Management COVID Task Force for the Valley. He's now making a plea to the public to help ease the burden on the health system. We are kind of in a bad situation. Let's try to go back to do those good things that we're known to do. You know, wear our masks if we're indoors, uh, social distance. Then hopefully we can get those numbers to come down. 
Now, the state is also providing more rapid tests to the hospital as well as regular uh, oxygen deliveries. In the meantime, the chief is also asking people to get out and get vaccinated. He says he recently contracted the virus and credits being vaccinated for keeping him out of the hospital. Reporting live, I'm Tim Callery, WMUR News. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Warner man says he regrets not getting vaccinated after brush with death. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. Tractor has been in our family since 1955 when great grandfather Pearlie and our grandfather George decided to sell tractors out of their barn with a work ethic geared towards customer satisfaction and loyalty. A lot has changed since then, but we still have a commitment to treating our customers like family. At Chapel Tractor, we have the experience to get the job done right. With locations in Milford, Brentwood, in Concord, New Hampshire, we provide customers with the highest quality equipment from the most trusted brands. Go to chapeltractor.com or stop in for a visit. I love you too. Valerie Dow really meant the part about through sickness and in health all those years ago. You can FaceTime from anywhere, but my husband is in that room. My husband needed me and I needed him to know that I was here and I wanted him to draw every bit of strength he could for me. This preschool teacher is vaccinated. Her beloved is not. He says it was part resistance, part procrastination. He regrets it now. If you're not vaccinated, please go get vaccinated because you don't want to be where I'm at. Scott says it started with incredible fatigue, and after he was admitted, his oxygen levels plummeted. Doctors were talking about a ventilator. Scott was terrified. I started making phone calls. I called my mother, say goodbye. I called my kids. Um, they didn't know. Val wouldn't hear of it. No dying. So here she sits, willing Scott to pull through. The nurses could feel this connection, and despite the long hours, the endless rotation of really sick patients found time to do something more. One morning, I come here, and I don't remember now what day it was, but he was still fighting for his life. And I look up, and there's a sign that says, Hi, Val, with a heart on it. Oh, my God, I cried. It was just beautiful. Today, doctors told Scott and Val he's on track to go home on Friday. In Concord, Amy Cavino, WMUR News. Okay, there you go on that video and that report. And that does it for this afternoon edition of the Riley King Newscast right here on the Riley King Network. I hope you all have a great rest of your afternoon. And I'll see you back here later on today for another newscast. Thank you for tuning in and watching this afternoon edition. Have a great rest of your day, everyone. Goodbye.